the book bunch. Today we are going to do a little mini review. I hope that you guys enjoy this video and please like and subscribe if you do. I'd really appreciate the support. Thank you to my returning viewers and if you're new here I'd like to say a very special welcome. So let's get into the video. Today's mini book review is going to be about one of my favourite classics of all time that I've ever read called Nausea. This is by Jean-Paul Sartre. He is a French writer from the, I want to say 1800s or maybe very early 1900s. And basically this book um, is a little bit different to his normal works. I haven't read any of his usual books that he's normally famous for because he is normally um, heavy into like like philosophy and different things like that. I'm not super into philosophy and things like that, but when I like read the blurb on this book and picked this up in the bookstore, I thought that it might be a really good book to read because the author basically spends the whole book talking and writing about and describing anxiety and things like panic attacks before they knew what it was, before society knew anything about mental health, before they knew what generalised anxiety was and chronic anxiety and things like that and like the different emotions that you kind of go through and the feelings of those emotions that you go through when you do have something like that um, and this book was really astounding to me to read about that so so the book follows a fictional author called Anton Roquentin. I can't pronounce it very well because I don't speak French, but basically it is his diary and he walks around his town or I think it might even be a town he's staying in and he basically just describes what is happening in the everyday life and the different things that he encounters while he's in this town. But yeah, it, it talks about the anxiety that he experiences in these different social situations that he's put in and basically how that affects his body and how he views the world through that except obviously as I said before he doesn't know that it is anxiety because they don't know that it exists it doesn't have a name yet it's it's not something that is known to society and yeah I just found it really amazing and almost poetical to read about something so because anxiety really it's kind of an abstract thing to talk about because it's all inside your head it's all mental and so to try to describe that to people in a time where you don't know what that is and you don't want to kind of I don't know I guess sound almost crazy because if you were considered crazy back in these times you get locked up into an asylum and all matters of awful torture and things would happen to you so trying to describe this this mental illness that you're going through without kind of crossing that line is really I don't know I feel like there's there's been nothing else I've read that is anything like that and I think this piece of literature is so important for the history of mental health and even just knowing your mental health better, like, as someone who suffers from anxiety, being able to hear someone else's perspective in such a genuine and, I guess, abstract way is just so comforting. Like, it was comforting to read this, even though, obviously, it's not necessarily pleasant, the things that he talks about, because there are some unpleasant situations that happen in this book it is like I said like set over 100 years old so what we see as inappropriate in society now they didn't or there was different standards and things back then so there there is a couple of touchy topics in here like um like sexual harassment and even I think from memory there might be one mention of like rape um so if that is a trigger warning for you, please be mindful of that. Um, or 
like skip over it because it's only a very small part of the book. I think it only takes up like a page or two. Um, but yeah, like it's a hard book to explain because, like I said, it it talks about these things that are already hard to describe and explain, and we know so much more about it than they did back then. And so yeah, to read and basically an artist's interpretation of what that is like was really amazing and yeah it was comforting it's a book that if you are suffering from mental illness it really makes you feel like you're not alone and it really sparked a joy for me and a need to read more about other people's mental illness and how they describe it in a literary and almost poetical kind of way yeah, I really love this book. I think it's definitely worth the read. And I do think you should be mindful that, like, the book's not enthralling because, like, it's not action adventure or whatever. It's just everyday life. But the bit that is good and and the focus of the book is the, the mental health. So I think that's really amazing. The reason it's called Nausea is because that's kind of how the anxiety and the panic attack make him feel it's the closest thing he could use to articulate that um yeah definitely recommend I think it's rather extraordinary bit of work I don't know about the rest of his his books so I wouldn't be able to recommend any others but I definitely think this is really important a really important read not only for people who suffer mental health but for also educational purposes for people who want to know more about it or that that need to bridge that gap with understanding what it's like to, to have a mental illness so yeah definitely recommend nausea i gave it a five out of five stars that's all for today's video i hope that you guys enjoyed this one and i will see you in the next video